Unveiling the Marvels, Five Astonishing Insights into the Indus Valley Civilization. Size and Population The Indus Valley Civilization covered an expansive area of approximately 486,489 square miles, 1,260,000 square kilometers, extending across present-day India, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. While researchers have identified more than 1,056 urban centers and villages belonging to this civilization, only 96 of these have undergone excavation. Concentrated along the Indus and Gagarhakra rivers and their smaller tributaries, the majority of these settlements showcased a distribution pattern. Notable cities, hosting populations exceeding 5 million individuals, included Rakigari, Harappa, Ganarawala, Dalavira, and Mohenjo-Daro. The earliest known settlement in the Indus Valley, Murgar, was established around 700 BC. The residents of the Indus Valley were primarily artisans and traders, predominantly residing in villages. Unfortunately, the perishable nature of the construction materials, such as mud and wood, used in these villages has resulted in the loss of their everyday lifestyles and cultural artifacts over the ages. Despite this, archaeological findings underscore the sophisticated nature of the Indus Valley civilization, characterized by efficient organization. Contrary to its contemporaries in Mesopotamia and Egypt, the heavily populated cities of the Indus Valley were remarkably orderly and well-planned, showcasing a level of urban design that could even rival modern city planners in some instances. Urban Planning the Indus Valley Civilization stands as the pioneer of meticulously designed cities, boasting grid patterns with streets intersecting at right angles, an achievement predating the era of Hippotamus of Miletus, often hailed as the father of European urban planning. These cities exhibited a uniform layout, with main streets aligned in a north-south direction and secondary roads in an east-west orientation. Beyond their thoughtful design, these urban centers featured exceptional drainage systems, adhering to a consistent pattern even down to the standardized dimensions of house bricks. The main thoroughfares, some reaching widths of up to 33 feet 10 meters, suggested potential spaces for marketplace activities. Harappa, in particular, showcased paved streets made of baked clay bricks to facilitate the movement of ox wagons, complemented by channels for effective water drainage. Remarkably, their wastewater management system included separate underground channels for rainwater and wastewater, accessible through terracotta lids for periodic cleaning. This innovative approach preceded the construction of impressive aqueducts by the Romans by thousands of years. Religion the excavated metropolitan areas within the Indus Valley consistently reveal intricate organization, notable architectural design, and advanced Bronze Age techniques. Despite these hallmarks of social complexity, there is a notable absence of conventional features such as elaborate crypts, personal shrines, large temples, or typical royal residences commonly associated with ancient civilizations. Historians propose that this absence may indicate the Indus Valley civilization operated as an equitable or democratic society. Despite nearly a century of extensive excavations and research, conclusive evidence supporting the existence of a dominant elite or a managerial hierarchy remains elusive. This absence is not indicative of a lack of complexity or sophistication in Indus society, but rather stems from misconceptions and flawed assumptions regarding wealth distribution, interpersonal relationships, expertise, and urbanization in humanity's ancient past. The Indus Valley civilization serves as a testament to the notion that social sophistication and complexity can exist independently of a managerial or power elite, challenging traditional views on societal structures. Economy The economy of the Indus Valley revolved around a robust combination of agriculture, trade, and commerce. Notably, during the Middle Bronze Age, Mesopotamian, Sumerian, scribes frequently documented a flourishing trade relationship with the nation of Maluha. Maluha, presumed to be the Indus Valley civilization, maintained strong economic ties with the Sumerians, facilitating the transport of significant quantities of wooden products and ebony. 
valuable commodities, including sesame oil and luxurious items like lapis lazuli, were predominantly sourced from Maluha. Archaeologists believe this trade-rich civilization to be the Indus Valley. Beyond their dynamic import-export activities, exemplified by the monumental Lothal dockyard discovery, the Indus Valley civilization earned the distinction of being the world's first producer of cotton. The earliest evidence and use of cotton, dating back to the 6th century BC, were found in Mergar. The valley's farmers were pioneers in refining spinning and weaving techniques, ensuring fair trade through a system of weights and measures crafted from limestone, some of which have been unearthed in and around the Lothal dockyard. Artists and Creativity Artisans during the Indus Valley era showcased remarkable sophistication in their craft, evident in artifacts that not only possess aesthetic excellence, but also exhibit versatility through the use of materials such as earthenware, copper, bronze, and indigenous rocks. They excelled in the early art of beadmaking, and the 3rd millennium BC witnessed a noticeable surge in artistic endeavors, as seen in the diverse array of recovered items from various archaeological sites, ranging from statues, sculptures, and pottery to jewelry and clay figurines. One particularly fascinating find was the bronze sculpture known as the Dancing Girl, a testament to the Indus people's expertise in metal twisting and casting. This sculpture also underscores the cultural significance of dance as an art form or entertainment in their ancient society. Renowned archaeologist Sir John Marshall expressed disbelief at the prehistoric origins of the Dancing Girl, stating, When I first saw her, I found it hard to believe that she was prehistoric. The creation of the Dancing Girl, along with other marvelous works of art, utilized a now-lost wax casting technique, predating the art forms of the Greeks by millennia. Thank you for watching today. If you enjoyed this video and want more exciting content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Stay tuned for future videos, and I can't wait to have you as part of our community. Until next time, take care and keep exploring.